You're all hear me. Yeah. Right, um, chopping a lock into a door. You always do it after the door has been hung. All right? So the door will be in the opening, so it'll be standing upright. So when you're doing this as a test piece to have a practice, I don't want to see any of you with the piece of timber like this because it's easier. All right? All of the pieces of timber that we're going to use, standing upright, please. There's a number of reasons why we're going to do that, but the main reason is that's how it's going to be when it's out on site. First thing that we've got to do is we're going to decide where we're going to put the, the actual door lock itself. That will be specified by the, the um, uh, clerk who works on the site or the uh, site agent. He will tell you what height the doors will go at. It's always to the spindle. So it's that hole there that you're marking out to. And it'll either, it'll either be one metre or 900 millimetres normally. Right, so it's 900 millimetres from the floor up to here and you'll say that's that's where your height will be and that's where you need to hold your lock like this so the the, nine, the, the hole is over the 900 millimeters all right and then you can mark out the size of your lock like so now you'll notice that with where i've marked it out i'm not absolutely precisely marking out dead tight to it i want to have a little bit of wiggle room in there you want to make your life as easy as possible. So don't get it dead tight. Give yourself a little bit of space as you can move it around. Then we need to find out the centre of our door. If you don't put it in the centre of the door, one, it looks really bad, and two, you can set yourself up in loads of different problems later on. Where I find the centre, once again, take a guess at where the centre is. Pencil line, should we come around this side, Ed, and you'll be able to see. Pencil line, where well, I've guessed it, I've put it slightly out, so I've got two lines on there. What I want is one line. So I'm just going to move that over slightly. centre. We know that the lock's going to go there, draw ourselves up a line through the centre, and then we need to square these lines over where the actual lock's going to be. There. And all this is marking out is the actual bulk of the actual lock itself. Right, we're not worried about the faceplate at the moment. When we're choosing the org of it that we want, if you choose the one that's dead tight for the actual drill, uh, for the actual um, lock itself, once again you're going to make hard work for yourself. So you want one which is slightly bigger, so there's a little bit of wiggle room in there, but it's not going to be so big that it's going to come out the side as a faceplate. Right? So you can see there that I've got sort of three or four mil either side of the faceplate there as well. But I can still use that all of it. Check to see where your depth is. So you can see there I've got to go almost the full depth of my auger bit to be able to make sure to, to be able to get the depth that I need to be able to put the lock in. Into your drill. Set it up for speed two for people already drilling. Drill your top one first. much. Then your bottom one, these are the two important ones. Okay. 
Let me have a drill, please. We're making sure that the drill goes in square that way. So it's not going to come out the side. We're also trying to get it as level as we can as well from this way. Right? There is a little bubble on the top there. You can check it, your level to see if you're going in nice and level. Right? Once you've got the top two done, the reason you do the top one and the bottom one first is because they're the ones you don't want to end up having to chop a load of timber out of the top. And if you try and go all the way down, you might end up with about 10, 15 mil at the bottom, which you can't get to with the drill. Um, if you do that like that, you'll have to chop it out with a chisel. If you do it this way, you'll be, still be able to use the, the, the auger bit to be able to get the, the meat of the timber out. And then just follow down that centre line with your auger bit, making sure that your pin always goes on your line. Don't overstress the drill. The auger bit. So it's going deep enough, but not all the way through your door. See by having it standing upright, a lot of the, the extra excess wood is coming out and just falling on the floor. If you've got that line flat, that's all going to build up in there. Um, it makes it harder for you to clean up, but it also means that this is going to clock up quicker. It means you're going to put more stress on your battery, harder work for yourself. Once you've got your holes drilled, you look in to see that you've got a nice straight line down either side. Then you can use your auger bit carefully because this is yours, you pay 10, 15 pounds for these, right? They are expensive. Carefully, you'll go into one of the holes and just move the angle up a little bit, yeah? Make sure you keep it straight. And this will take out the bulk of the material for you, right? See there, rather than coming up against a bit of resistance, I'm not forcing it, but gently moving it around. What you're looking to be able to do is go up and down with your organ all the way through, right? Last little bit at the bottom, that just clears out, clears out all the excess, excess wood and pulls it out onto the front for you. Notice the auger bit is still straight because I haven't forced it, right? Then, you should be able to just put the lock in there, it should go in there nice and flat. And where it's not flat at the moment, I just need to take a little bit more at the bottom there, which I can see. Once it's in there, you just check it to make sure it's central. You also want this line here to be parallel and this line here to be parallel. And once it's in there, you just draw around it. So this time, it does need to be dead tight. Then we chop it out like um, your, your hinge. So start at the top. Just lower that in nice. Okay. 
bigger chisel you could use, the better, because that gives you a nice straight line. And it's coming down that edge now. I always tend to hold it off just a little bit at the end so that I can go around and tidy it up perfectly at the end, working on the basis that if I'm going to get it wrong, I want it to be too small rather than too big. I can take stuff off and I can't put it back on again. Once I've gone all the way around the edge, then I can just finish it off with the chisel. Turning the chisel round so I've got the angle part against the timber. So I'm sort of trying to do that scooping action with it rather than digging it into the actual timber. Last little bit. It should then just fall out. And you can come down this edge. This is the bit that you've got to watch. Because this is the bit that I'll be looking for when I'm doing the assessment to make sure that that's a nice clean edge down there. Right? If you catch that edge, then you've basically mucked up the door. See that I changed direction of the, the way that I was going with my chisel because I just felt a little bit more resistance from the grain. So I felt as though the grain was leaning in a little bit there. And I wanted it to come off rather than dig into the timber. So I've got it roughly right. Turn the, the lock around so you're not sort of forcing it into the hole and then having the problems to get it out again. Turn the lock around, put the face pallet in and see if it fits. If it doesn't, then you just need to tighten it up a little bit more. Obviously if you've got this in the, in the door lining, you're not going to have the problem with the door keep leaning over. It's quite nice now, yeah. <coughs> so we know that it's going to fit if I put it around the other way. What we now need to do is just square that top line around. So that we know where the face plate is. Hold the face plate so it's on your line that you've just marked out. Yeah. And then um, with your small chisel, uh, sorry, sorry, small pencil, we just want to mark out either inside there or to the side where the actual organ part, uh, where your holes want to be. On the side. And we can set the Marking gauge, sorry, combination square to where the centre of our um, spindles are going to go. 
And if you slide that down, the actual lock, you'll see that lines up perfectly with the lock as well. And that'll be the case on every single lock that you fit. They will always line up. Alright? So I'm now, now transfer that information over to here. Square those lines around so I can mark out on the other side as well where my holes are going to be. The top spindle is for the handle. Whatever you put on there is normally going to have a fairly decent sized rose. This is the part which goes around the actual handle itself, so that would be your rose here. All right. So you can use a nice big drill bit, so you use the same drill bit that you've used for this and just drill through the size of your side of your door. And that should put it square so that's somewhere near you have a hole. Yeah? Be careful with that because that's often the case where you come through, force it through, you'll end up with um, the door busting out on this side. Yeah? It's okay, you can get away with a little bit of tearing on there, but if you end up with a big splinter, then bad news. With your lock, you've got to be a bit more precise with your lock, because normally you'll just get a little discussion which will just cover the keyhole itself. Right, so you're looking for as small a hole as you can get away with. So this time, I'm going to do one top and one bottom. One top, one bottom. Try and keep them in line, I don't mind. And then just join those two lines up, those two holes up, with the chisel. We've actually got a keyhole shape rather than a big hole. Once that's done, make sure we clean out your holes, you can lock it into it. You could just grab me a little Phillips screwdriver at the bottom of the cupboard. All right, so really nice finish around this faceplate. That's the main thing that you're looking for. Even on a cheap door, that's going to show up. If you're, if you're trying to fill it, all right, after the paint is a bit, just, when the paint is finished, it, it's going to look awful, even on a cheap door. And if the door's five or six hundred pounds, and you muck up that little bit there, then that's um, going to cost you the five or six hundred pounds in some cases, as they will make you repair it. Final thing I'll show you, all of these locks come handed with the, um, the spindle. So they'll, they'll only go into the door one way, so that will go into there and only shut that way. Yeah? You want to change it, so carefully, on a clean desk, undo these screws, 
and depending on the quality of your lock, make sure you don't lose it, you want to put your finger on the spindle, because that's the bit that springs out sometimes, and that's all held together with these springs here. And you just see, just in there, there's a little spring, which is holding that in place. Right. So take that out, remove the spring just with your finger, like so. So what I've done, is just ease that off from there, so keeping that in place. Take this out, turn it round, and then you've just got to get the lock back into place again with the spring. All right? Then put the spring wheel back in place again as well. Make sure that you've got the spring in place first. And then replace your face cover and everything. Okay. That'll do for the filming, thank you. <laughs>